morning, everyone. Uh, so today I'll be talking about something uh, which I've been doing with my uh, master's project student Abhishek on issues of uh, quantum quenches in uh, integrable systems uh, uh, for the last one year or so. so. Here's a brief outline, but in the interest of time, let us go to the uh, uh, matter. So a tangible starting point for us, this paper which appeared uh, last year, uh, which where they were studying uh, phenomena of time reversal and eco in transverse field Ising model. And this is an integrable system. And here in the figure, they, are, we have, they have shown, uh, so they are measuring various quantities and they have shown three different uh, uh, time, uh, time reversal protocols. We will be focusing on the first one. I'll describe it uh, in a moment. Now, the system we consider is the transverse field Ising model in 1D. And uh, you can think of transverse field Ising model with the next nearest neighbor interaction, which is uh, in literature is called Ani model. Okay. Now, the first one is an integrable system in one dimension. Uh, so we have some, many of us are familiar with the Jordan Wigner and uh, the usual stuff. And, uh, but the second one is not. So the, we will, uh, throughout the uh, talk, we will be varying these parameters J prime and we'll study what, uh, what it does. Now, this is uh, what I mean when, uh, when we do time reversal. So we will effectively, we achieve time reversal by, so we take a system in some initial condition, evolve it for some time, and then we want to do a time reversal, which in this case is simply achieved by reversing the Hamiltonian. Now, if you exactly reverse the Hamiltonian, yeah. Is it okay? Okay. Uh, it is also because of my orientation. Let me stand this way. Okay. Uh, so here, uh, as we are familiar with basic quantum mechanics, uh, all, all microscopic, even classical mechanics, if we uh, exactly change the Hamiltonian to its negative, the trajectory will exactly be reversed. It will come back to the initial state. So that is not very interesting. We would want to know what is the effect, what happens if we reverse the Hamiltonian but not to exactly what it was before, but with a small change. So here H in these models is the external applied magnetic field, the transverse field. And here are a bunch of observables. Uh, so they are fa uh, fairly standard, so let me not uh, get into them. Uh, we want, uh, so one uh, difference from the earlier study is that we would want to uh, study the non-integrable system also. And as a result, uh, we will be doing a direct numerical simulation. And there is no special property in this model. Uh, so the system sizes which are accessible to us is quite small. And immediately we run into this problem that if I take, for example, the transfer sizing model, it has very large amplitude fluctuations. What I'm showing is the um, mean magnetization in the system as a function of time for some system size like eight or 10, which is routinely accessible. Now, this is a problem because if a eco kind of phenomena we are interested in studying, we, if this is too much of a background. What we do, we add to suppress this uh, guys, we add a small amount of disorder. Okay, so we have a transverse field. On top of that, there is a very small amount of disorder. And this is what this orange curve is. So it has sort of immediately removed uh, the, this uh, large coherent oscillations. Now, so, uh, so this, uh, uh, so what, now we look at, so there are, there are these various quantities we can look at in the time evolution. So what we are doing, we start with a fully polarized initial condition. So all the spins are pointing along plus Z direction. And we let it evolve with a Hamiltonian with a small disorder. This is single realization, okay, with a small disorder. So there's no large amplitude oscillation now because of the disorder. Uh, at time t equal to 100 in some units, so J is one in that units, we switch the Hamiltonian to its negative with a small, so H, H itself is one, the transverse field, and the new Hamiltonian is uh, one plus point one, so one to one. Then we uh, continue the evolution. So the, if you look closely here, there is a practically no effect of making the switch. The time evolution continues, and around two tau, we expect something to happen. But this is still a bit noise. So, so see, optimistically, we may say that, okay, something is happening, but this is not good uh, right now. And the same thing happens even for any model. Um, but here the signature is a little bit uh, better. But when we do the, uh, so this was with single realization, and we can, we have with this disorder now, so we can just uh, average over the disorder to kill off some of the noise. And then we see a little better signature, 
So this is disordered average time evolution of various quantities at time t equal to 100, we have switched the Hamiltonian. And when we come back, when we look at two, near 2000, we see that there is some activity. So the both for uh, uh, transfer sizing, that is j prime equal to zero, and the any model with one value of j prime. Now what we will do, we will systematically uh, just ask uh, how, what happens to, we'll change this uh, tau, as well as uh, the values of j prime and ask what is happening in the system. So for example, the first one is the mean magnetization, second one is entanglement, third one, so the various, uh, there are five of them, uh, there are many, uh, but uh, no matter which one you take, there is this effect. And two of these in particular, actually three of these, the, uh, and I, this number fluctuation, mean magnetization, and this echo, they are experimentally accessible. We will focus on entanglement because it is a little nicer numerically. So we look at, so what we do, uh, we take a, a time evolution like this, let us focus on entanglement. We start, we are starting with fully polarized state. So that is zero entanglement to begin with. The time evolution generates a lot, large amount of entanglement. And then the, at this point, we have done the reverse of Hamiltonian at 2000, the entanglement dips from what the typical value it has. We ask, what is that small number? To what value does it dip, okay? You see, ideally, if it was a perfect reversal, it would dip to zero. So suppose that the Hamiltonian was exactly reversed, suppose the delta H was zero, it would actually come back to zero at two tau, exactly two tau. We are asking that for these values of parameter, to what is small value, or to what value does it dip? Now, that is what this plot is. So for different uh, values of J prime, we see as a function of tau as well. So if tau is very small, so this is, uh, you know, this graph can be understood, uh, you know, it is very much uh, in agreement with our common sense. If tau is too small, then probably not much, that system does not have time to damage our initial state. And in all cases, the entanglement comes back to zero. Okay. But as we start increasing tau, we see that the larger the J prime is, the more damage has happened. Okay. So in particular, for example, by the time we are tau equal to 100 or some such number here, uh, there is a large difference bet between the uh, transfer sizing, which is this uh, blue curve, and J prime equal to one, uh, which is you know, a bit high value of this next nearest term. Um, so we can, so, uh, so this one was uh, for few values. So what we have taken, what we have done, we have taken a large number of these curves and then we have plotted it as an image in this manner. So here, so the way to read this diagram is this. You go, you look at horizontal lines like this. So easier, so that is the annual limit. So when tau is zero, uh, S min is zero. As you start increasing tau, it starts to increase monotonically and then becomes a very large number. On the other hand, uh, if this is the Ising limit, uh, you start at zero and then it becomes a large, it also becomes a large number, but not as large as that. And in between we have all the other values of J prime. Okay. Now, what we do next is that we try to draw we, try, we see that there is some kind of non-monotonicity here as a function of J prime. We try to extract that. So what we do in this diagram, we ask for each value of J prime, what is the value of tau? When, when I go along this, I reach half of the maximum value, okay? Suppose that the maximum entanglement in that time evolution was two, so I ask at what value of tau is it one? Okay, so it is, it is somewhat ad hoc. Uh, and we obtain a curve like this. So this is, uh, uh, for, we have drawn it for two system sizes. So we first we notice that uh, the Ising one is not the one which is best. So larger tau is better. So it, what, the, uh, what it means, the larger value of tau means it can uh, tolerate uh, for a longer duration uh, and still come back, okay? So that's what tau represents. Uh, whereas when J prime is very large, uh, considerable damage happens even for small values of tau like 30 or 40. Okay? So by that time already much of the information has been lost. Now, we believe that this uh, non-monotonicity in this curve is actually a system size effect, uh, but we uh, know because of limitations of our simulation and uh, not having access to a very big computer, we could not prove it, but this curve is a little, little bit indicative. No, this, this is definitely not a proof. But we would want to, what ideally we would want to show is that if we draw it for different values of n, as the n becomes bigger, this thing will shift towards here. 
and ideally we would think we would, this part will not be there in the thermodynamic limit this part will not be there only at j prime equal to 0 there will be when it is integrable the tau will be very large and reversal will be very good for any value of j prime it will be worse than that okay now one more thing we look at is uh, uh, fluctuation in entanglement so this is what it is uh, so we uh, so the fluctuation is with respect to the disorder realization and here Again, similar situation is say, uh, say it is the same uh, data, but in, instead of looking at the mean entanglement, we are looking at the fluctuation. And here for a large value of J prime when it is non-integral, this is much nicer signature. Uh, the, at 2 tau, nothing special happens because the, if, if someone optimistically say, oh, I think that there is a peak here, but that amplitude peak is at present anyway. But at this, this one is much, much clearer. So, so for example, at two, near 2 tau, at a small value of j prime, there is a much larger fluctuation. So what is happening is that the entanglement mean is going down to a smaller number, and at, correspondingly, at the same uh, simultaneously with, between different realizations, there is a more fl you know, higher fluctuation. This is something which we do not understand fully. That why why there will be more fluctuation in this case. Uh, and th so then we do a, a little bit. So so far, all these uh, results were with fully polarized initial condition. Initially, all these things were pointing up, but now we check what is the effect of initial condition. So we take random classical initial condition. So what do I mean by that? Uh, so if you switch off the transverse field in these models, it's the classicalizing model. So you take an eigenstate of that. Okay. So a state where at every side the S Z value is either one or minus one. Okay. With that, and if you look at uh, this uh, 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 this fluctuation, uh, it starts at zero and then reaches some finite value, and that at tau, even uh, even here, it has some um, uh, measurable uh, uh, dip, but it is a lot more uh, dramatic for small values of uh, you know, when we are closer to integrability. Okay, and uh, with this, so let me just skip the next one and uh, summarize. What the bottom line is that uh, there is a very, uh, even with very small system size simulations, we can actually measure, see the measurable effect of how integrability goes away in this kind of uh, studies. Uh, thank you. So what happens when delta H is across the critical point? When delta? Uh, uh, I don't know. So, it, it, and I don't think anything special will happen because of an initial condition is uh, not uh, is not anything special. So, if we if this this question is this is important question. If our initial condition was let us say the eigenstate of the first Hamiltonian, then so that is the usual quench. Okay, then you so this study is more uh, you know the motivation for this study is uh, in quantum information processing. Suppose you ma manage to get a complicated uh, many body state which you want to save. What kind of medium sh will do how much damage? Roughly, this is what we are trying to do. So, I think th that question we'll try to explore. Yeah. Uh, this is probably related to the question that was asked. Uh, the transverse easing model has a quantum critical point, right, at t equal to zero. So, are these quenching experiment, I mean, theory, whatever, this done? Quenching is not uh, near that, so because the, we are using polymer. So, what happens? You know, suppose you quench through that quantum critical point. So, no, again, so we do not know the answer, but because our initial state does not have any special property in the terms of, it does not belong to any of the phase, right, uh, in, in terms of phase transition, we are just choosing classical state as the initial state. So, I, my expectation is that there will not be an, a difference, there should not be a difference, but we have to check that. So, I mean, so you said for like uh, right now that at the system sizes you are looking at this, you see this rise in tau, but if you go to larger sizes, you expect it to go to. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah, the left part yeah. will be. Yeah. Right. So, is it because like at smaller system sizes, still, for example, if you look at uh, level spacing statistics, is it that you would still not see uh, like a chaotic? Actually, this, uh, so, level statistics is actually very nice uh, uh, in terms of this uh, because. Uh, uh, no, actually, that is probably that is correct. Level spacing for the system. So we say we also have a small disorder. Okay. So if we try to do the level spacing, then uh, in this region we have not checked, but I think that it would already be 
the beginner distribution. But you have not checked. But we have not checked explicitly. Yeah. So because see, in other studies we have checked, and eight system size is already big enough that you actually see beginner distribution clearly. So uh, so that should not be the problem.